Hi, this is Russell Stanard from teachertrainingvideos.com. If you're teaching with Zoom, you've probably realized that there are certain things your students need to know. If your students don't know those things, it's actually really hard to run a session. It's actually really hard to do a breakout room or get them to interact with the interactive whiteboard. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you all the things that you need to show your students. And you could even just send them this video and get them to watch it. Hopefully then it will really give them all the bases of all the things that they need to know. And a couple of things that I'm gonna add at the end that even for a teacher they might be interested in, you might not be aware of. So I've put a couple of advanced features towards the end of this video. Hope this video is gonna be really practical. I'm teaching with Zoom at the moment, so I definitely realize what my students need to know and what's gone wrong and I'm going to go through it, easy things first and then the more advanced things at the end. Hope you like the video, as always if you do, please like it, please share it with other teachers, really important at the moment, perhaps even share this one with your students and uh, if you've got any comments or any questions leave them in the section below. Come and join me on my teachertrainingvideos.com website and, and join the uh, YouTube channel as well. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start with the super easy stuff, though this often happens. First thing is students uh, are in full screen and they click on the chat window and it doesn't open up on the right hand side and neither does the participants window. And they get all confused about why they can't see their chat window and their particip participants window on the right. The reason for that is quite simple, teach them to exit full screen and maximize. When you've got the window maximized, if you click on the chat, now it will open and the same with the participants. Now sometimes when they've been doing screen sharing or they opened or closed the window, suddenly they'll come back again to the main window and it will be full screen and the chat window will have disappeared and so will the um, list of participants. So you've got to teach people not to go full screen unless of course they're happy to have the chat window in the middle of the screen, which I'm not. So I always tell my students, don't enter full screen. And if you are full screen, come out of it. First thing. Second thing, really important this one, make sure your students are aware of what happens to Zoom when they minimize, because they will need to minimize sometimes because you want them to do something off Zoom and then come back in. When they click on the, the minimize button, it comes down to this size screen this small. If they want to make it even smaller, they can actually click here and just make it really small and then move it off the screen somewhere. But when you want them back into Zoom, they need to be able to click on this button. So they need to be aware what happens to Zoom when they leave the screen. Okay, so minimize and it will bring it down to this size. They can make it a little bit bigger, or a little bit smaller. I often do that and then I put it down on the corner. And then when I want to open it up again, uh, full screen. Now, why am I telling you that? Well, Obviously, there is the problem of sharing links in Zoom. When you share a link that you want your students to go to, they can't click on it and go straight to that page. They need to copy the link, minimize Zoom, go to the website, do the activity, maximize Zoom. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine I want my students to come to this website because I've answered the simple questions we're practicing English, what did you eat yesterday? So I'm gonna share this link with my students, copy. Let's imagine that we're on the Zoom site. I share the link with the students. The students now need to l copy that link. They need to minimize the Zoom window. They need to open up, click on the link. Put their answer in, let's say toast. Enter it, click on submit, it will come up onto the screen and of course all the other students will also be answering so it's a collaborative tool. Once they finish, they need to know where Zoom is. They always complain to me, Russell, Russell, I can't find Zoom. There it is, open it up again and then we can carry on with the lesson. So that ability to be able to copy a link, minimize Zoom, go to the website that you want to go to, do the action and then maximize Zoom is vital and I'm doing this all the time with my students and so I've really had to make that clear to them. Sometimes you're going to want your students to screen share. If your students go into breakout rooms, then they need to be able to screen share. Otherwise, all they're going to do is go into a breakout room and the only thing they're going to be able to do is see each other on the screen through the webcams. But if we want them to interact with some, interact with some content, like a PowerPoint slide or a list of questions or to watch a video together or doing something together, they must learn to screen share. So the first thing is that when you're gonna do a breakout room, you need to click 
on screen share, go to advanced settings and make sure that participants can screen share as well. Now, when the students are in breakout rooms, you only need one person to be able to screen share, but it is important that we set that button. Now the students can screen share. So students need to be able to learn to share their screen and click on the different things on the screen that we, they wanna share in their group. So let's take an example. Let's imagine, for example, that the students have just watched the video and now you want the students to go into groups and to discuss the video and write a list of, for example, things that they understood in the video or the points that were made in the video. So the students would be moved into breakout rooms. One student, only one in each group would need to screen share, open up the interactive whiteboard. It only requires one, all of the rest of the students will see it. They will need then to be able to learn to click on the text and to write their points on the screen. Okay, really easy for them to do that, okay? Now, one thing important is they probably will need, most of the time it's only gonna be writing on the screen. If you want them to draw, of course, they'll need to click on the draw uh, button and they can do that, but most of the time it's gonna be writing. Sometimes they're gonna to wanna to clear their screens. They can do that by clicking here, clear, clear all drawings. Now, if they don't want this window open, they can close it here. If they wanna open it again, they roll over here and click on whiteboard, the tools will open again. These are really vital um, skills to show to students so that when they're working with the interactive whiteboards, they're absolutely clear how they can work on the screen. So all they need to do is click on uh, text, click on the screen, and then they can start writing as usual. If they wanna change the color, they can just select it, choose another color, and then from then on you will be writing with another color if you wanted to do that, okay? Really useful to teach the students to be able to do that. Now another useful skill to make the students aware of is that when you screen share, so I'm just gonna come over and click on screen share now, and I'm gonna open up the interactive whiteboard. There's a couple of really interesting options that they need to be aware of. Number one is you can roll over and click on remote control and pass control to another student if you want them to operate on the screen and do something on the screen. But perhaps even more interesting, particularly when you're working with the interactive whiteboard, is that you do have the option to click here, more, allow participants to annotate. Now, other students can actually write on the screen. So for example, I've just passed control, annotation, Make sure that students are aware that there's two ways they can view the screen. They can have speaker view, that is that they can see the person, let me just click off, but they can click on speaker view, and therefore they can have the person who's currently speaking on the screen, or they can do gallery view and they can see everybody on the screen. When students are gonna screen share a video, make sure they're aware that they click on screen share. They need to click on share computer sound. They can also click on optimize screen sharing for video clip. Uh, I don't always click on that. Uh, click and share, and now that window will play to the students. Another thing that students might need to know is that they can actually click on new share and then jump straight away to share something else. So they could play a video and then move to the interactive whiteboard. Okay, and then if they want to again, they can come up here, let me just close that window down, roll over, click on new share and jump to a PowerPoint presentation. So students are able to do that while they're in a uh, presentation while they're sharing their screens and that can be quite useful for them to realize that they can work with. So they can be jumping between playing a video and then suddenly coming back to the interact whiteboard and take some notes. And this can be quite an effective way of working as well. One last feature that's really worth knowing, if we click on screen share, we'll do this with a video. So we're watching the video with our students and we wanna have a discussion immediately. We don't wanna leave the room because we're gonna play the video a little bit more. We do have the option to click on more and chat and your students can do the same. So they can actually, actually open up the chat window while they're on a video. They can also, if we just jump over and sh new share and come to interactive whiteboard, the same thing as well. They can open up the chat window when they're working 
in the interactive whiteboard or even when they're when you're doing a presentation with PowerPoint that also can be really useful okay really hope those tips were useful hope those tips are going to be useful for your students if you want more free videos please come to teachertrainingvideos.com uh, there's a special section on online teaching there's a special section on zoom uh, and if you want to follow my work then please just sign up to my newsletter that way you'll keep up to date with all the latest videos and the blogs and the webinars i'm doing loads of webinars at the moment and the online courses i run and the other thing that you can do is also sign up to my youtube channel i think we're nearly up to twenty-five thousand subscribers now and that way you'll be updated at least with all the new videos that come out Thank you very much and hope the video was useful.